Sure. Well, so the first verdict um, was, you know, happened end of 2019, but um, Mr. Yamaguchi appealed. So it went to the Supreme Court. So the case didn't end until 2022, the day when ex Prime Minister Abe was shot. So it was exact same day. And we actually started our post production in 2019. But that was the hardest part. For me, you know, um, as a journalist, it was easier to document and try to look what happened to me from different perspective. But when I re you know, try to be editing room, edit my own story as a director and I'm in it, I didn't know what kind of, you know, um, distance I should have how much emotion should I put and so there, it was like constant argument with my editor who's amazing but you know I don't want to put anything you know any crying moment that's too much why would I do that about my own story but then so I realized if I'm telling if I'm telling someone else's story I would put it right so but I needed some time it took four years to edit till I feel like okay I'm ready and this is the way it should be told Thank you for asking. That's really important because it has changed twice, but it's not enough. So um, first change happened in 2017 in June, two months after I went public. That time the update was now male victim can claim rape. Before it was only women. And it was again last year, 2022. And <laughs> that was the time when sex for consent for sex was now 15 years old and before it was 13 years old. <sighs> so yeah, um, changes are slow, but it's happening. But the biggest part that I wish we can push more is that consent is not considered to, to prove rape. So to prove rape, still a victim has to show how much they been threatened or violated severely, so it's hard to prove, you know, um, because we often get frozen. Um, one of the Swedish studies says that the seventy percent of victims get frozen status, and it's normal. And it's not often you're, you know, severely violated. So if you don't consider consent, it's not gonna happen. But you know, it's Japan. We always have this culture like no, no means yes, and like ah, how can I communicate? So. I think it really has to come in earlier education stage. No ready means no, and it's not in our, our education yet as well. So we still need to do some update. And I hope this film can push that one more step forward, right? Maybe in the back of there, woman? Well, there were, of course, um, other people who were speaking before, but I feel like they weren't given enough voice to be, you know, heard. And after Me Too movement happened, there are few came forward, but I don't think it became a movement in Japan. And recently, um, this amazing, courageous woman called Rina Gonoi, who was sexually um, harassed and abused in self-defense military came forward because her case was dropped and once he, she came forward she could put she could prosecute the perpetrators but the problem is do we really have to come forward every time and you know speak to the press show your face you know put put yourself out there and that's that's not okay like that's a big risk and um rena and i both witness how, you know, online slander is so horrible. It's, it's really hard and it changes your life. So hopefully system will change so we're, it's easier or we don't even have to come forward to talk about it. Thank you so much for such an important question.
please help me if you want to say something. So I, I think you met Hannah, this is an amazing producer of mine. Um, after I went public, she somehow heard about my case from her Japanese friend and she Skyped me out of nowhere. <laughs> And she said, you know what, why don't you move away from Japan because I know it's dangerous for you and you can stay at my office. <laughs> and I was like, who is this little girl? Like, scary. <laughs> but then she said, I'm also a journalist and documentary filmmaker, so I know what it is like. And that's how we came as a team. And she just decided to come back after a while when I published my book saying, no one can harm Swedish citizens, so I'm gonna be a human seal and come back to Tokyo with you. And she literally was like in front of me, like watch out, and something never happened. So without her, we couldn't make this film. So everyone, thank you. Oh, thank you. Yeah, it was a really special time when I got to Tokyo for the first time because there was, as I said in the intro, it was before the Me Too. And my friend, my Japanese friend who was telling me about Shoei's case, she was saying like, no one had heard about someone who go public with face and name. It's like, this woman, this young woman, like she must be so having a, such a hard time, you know, because the country doesn't, didn't know like how to react. And friends and family, because it was so new and, and scary. It's such a shameful thing to, to talk about. She really broke the, the norm in a way that was, you know, scary, but it, it really changed the country, in my opinion. Um, yeah. Do we have, yeah, so we'll, um, one more question. Uh, do we have time? Oh, yeah. Yeah? yeah? Maybe the woman in the back over there? Oh. I can't see so much, sorry. Hi. Uh, to be honest, it's kind of triggering for me because uh, the, I'm sorry, uh, the similar experience, I just, it's not really a question, I just want again to show my respect to you and thank you for, I see, my, I see myself over there, but that is the best version, better version of myself, thank you so much. Yeah.